Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Gage Holly, and for the first time ever, I'm Myra Rothbaum. And we'll we are broadcasting live at George Washington High School to see Park Tudor take on the Wolves from Providence, Christo Ray. Ray. And the, the starters for Park Tudor are going to be number one, Micah Moore, number two, Malachi Archie, number four, Spencer Hogue, number 15, Gaddafi Honaker, and of course, number 21, Ronald Johnson. It's a good starting lineup for you guys out there. Looks like Park Tudor has set on a final starting lineup going into uh, uh, sectionals, excuse me. Who do you think has been the breakout player for Park Tudor this season? The breakout player, I think Micah Moore has improved a great amount throughout this year. And why do you say that? He's, ever since or the start of the season, he's been driving, and he's had a very good three-point percentage through the entire year. Well, very good comment. And as for Providence Cristo Ray High School, their starter lineup is going to be number 23, Nausea Stamps, number 24, De Dehavian Brody. It's going to be number 32, Hollis Co. Number 10, Chris Hart. And number 30, TJ Tom. Excuse me, number 31, Jack Weeze Davis. Looks like they're going to be starting all their seniors as yeah. it is senior night for Providence Cristo Ray. Yeah. Part two of their senior night will be against Monrovia, celebrating the one senior they have on their team. That's right. Spencer Hogue manning up all seniors, who has done a great job leading this team, as now he is no longer co-captain, but only captain for these Park Tudor basketball team. Mm -hmm. As we're about to tip off, who you got in this one, Meyer? I've got the Panthers here, seeing that the JV team doubled the Wolves. Great defense by Amir Lloyd and phenomenal offense by Keyshawn Taylor led the Panthers against the Wolves. Of course, everybody playing well. And now we're about to tip off live at George Washington High School as Chris Hart gets the rebound after the successful tip. He brings it up down the court. Looks like Park Tudor is going to be playing a man-to-man -man defense. Passes it to Hollis Cole. Cole passes it to Stamps. Stamps gets it up top. Brody drives, kicks it out. Back to Hart up top. Hart drives wing, step back three, no good. But the rebound is by Co. Co gets the rebound, gives it to Hart. Hart drives in, no good. Second offensive rebound, rebound right now by Davis. Davis misses the layup, and finally Kadafi Honaker pulls down the rebound. Yeah, Chris Hart likes to shoot a lot, and he is the Wolves' leading scorer. Micah Moore has the ball up top. Looks like Providence is also going to be playing a man-to-man. -man. Gives it to Malachi. Malachi, who gives it to Ronald. Ronald Johnson gives it to Malachi. Malachi dishes it to Ronald again, gives it to Gaddafi Honaker in the wing. Gaddafi drives in, goes up with the lamp, and one. The shot is good. What Great a drive. What a shot by Gaddafi Honaker, showing his toughness. For the Wolves, they're, due to the fact it's senior night, they are benching their sophomore, who is 6'7", number 25, Anthony Williams. And Gaddafi Honaker. Going up for one shot, his and one shot. Up, no good off the front rim. As that foul was on Davis, that will be his first foul. Chris Hart brings the ball up. Gives it to Coe. Coe gives it back to Stamps, but Coe hesitated on that pass, ended up traveling. Hart Tudor is a very good defensive team. As in their JV game, they caused many turnovers. Micah Moore passes it to Spencer Hogue. Looks like no press by Providence, unlike the JV team who pressed the whole game. Hogue has the ball, tries dribbling it. Tight defense, though, by Stamps. As Hogue passes it to Greenwald. Greenwald, quick sub in for Malachi Archie. But it looks like Hogue has the ball up top. Gives it back to Ronald Johnson in the corner. Does a shot fake. Gives it up to Gaddafi Hotter up top. Great defense by Providence Chris Del Rey. Micah has the ball. Gives it in the corner to Ronald. Ronald gives it back up top to Micah. Micah gives it to Cole. Cole drives baseline. Gets nowhere. Gives it to Micah Moore. Who gives it to Gaddafi Honaker up top. Gaddafi Honaker gives it to Spencer Hogue. Spencer Hogue holds the ball. Great defense by Providence. The Wolves are playing lockdown defense on Park Tudor. Not letting them get it in. 
as Hoke has the ball, gives it to Gaddafi Honecker. Gaddafi Honecker gets stripped, but that's going to be a foul on Jacquees Davis. That will be his second foul, second foul of the game. Partridge likes to hold the ball a lot, as they don't score too many points, but are very good defensively. The slow offensive style could hurt them or could cause the defense to wear down. And Spencer Hogue has the ball. Gives it to Ronald Johnson. Ronald Johnson then gives it to Malachi. Malachi gives it back to Ronald. Ronald gives it to Spencer. Spencer gives it to Cole. Cole gives it to Ronald. Ronald takes a three. No good. As number 24, Brody racks down the rebound. As Hart takes, has the ball, he goes and drives. Ends up getting stripped, blocked by Ronald Johnson off of Hart's leg. Park Tudor ball. Phenomenal defense by Ronald Johnson there. Hard drive by Chris Hart. Ronald played amazing defense there. And Spencer Hogue taking up the ball. Park Tudor up 2-0 with 5.15 left in the first quarter. Gives it to Cole Greenwald, who gives it to Malachi Archie. Who gives it to Kadoffi, Kadoffi driving. Gives it to Ronald Johnson. Ronald gives it to Spencer, who shoots, and it's good. Phenomenal drive by Ronald Johnson. They're getting the open three to Spencer Hogue. That was a nice three by Spencer Hogue. His first of the game. As Oh, but uh, trying to return a three for his own is number 23, Stamps. Stamps with the air ball though, as Spencer Hogue gets a rebound and is taking the ball off court. He drives, kicks it out to Gaddafi Honecker up top. Gaddafi Honecker has it, gives it to Cole Greenwald who gives it to Malachi Archie. Archie gives it to Gaddafi, Gaddafi ends up walking though, just didn't have his footwork under control as oh boy, the big threat, the sophomore number 25, Anthony Williams checks in the game, 6-7, Park Tudor's biggest threat, maybe of the year. Anthony Williams' stats, however, have not shown as he is 6'7 and looks very athletic. He only has nine points and seven and a half rebounds a game. And now it's going to be Oko trying to drive it in. No good. As Spencer Oak tries to pull down the rebound. And it looks like that's going to be out on number 24, Brody, when. Was that out on Spencer Hogue? That was a terrible call by the ref scare there, Gage. Hogue clearly touched it last, even threw the ball out of bounds. He had, but they called it out on Providence. But either way, Hart tips the ball, tries to get it, but it ends up going out of bounds. Still Park Tudor's ball. As there's 3.51 left in the first quarter. Park Tudor up 5-0, taking the ball from the sideline. Gives it to Cole Greenwald. Greenwald to Qaddafi. Qaddafi tries to give it to Malachi, ends up getting reflected by number 13, Alkin Ramirez, who just subbed in the game. That was great defense by their two subs. Ramirez got the tip, and Williams played great defense on Honaker. And it looks like they're gonna try and get Spencer open for the three, nowhere. Gives it to Qaddafi, Honaker in the corner instead, who gives it to Cole Greenwald, who swings it to Malachi Archie on the wing. Archie has it, gives it to Cole Greenwald. Cole Greenwald drives, gives it out to Archie. Archie holds it up top. Tight defense by Ramirez, who's normally a starter, but because it was senior night, subbed in the game. Gives it to Archie in the corner. Archie gives it to Cole Greenwald. Guarded tightly by Brody. Back to Malachi, who looks like he was gonna pop, ended up not, giving it out to Ronald Johnson in the wing. Great defense by Providence, really not letting Park Tudor score as they still swing it up, to, but Malachi shoots a three, no good, short. Really good defense right there. Mali or Archie and Greenwald both passed up a lot of open opportunities there, however. And uh, now it will be Hart passing it to Brody. They give it to Ramirez. Ramirez to Hart. Hart drives the ball. He keeps trying to drive, and that will be an on-the-floor foul by number four, Spencer Hogue. That will be his first of the game. The Wolves had not have had terrible teamwork thus far, as I think that they have not had a possession with more than one. It's either been a hard drive or a contested three-pointer. You know what? I will say that I do think that their chemistry has not been as spot-on as it needs to be if they want to 
hold on with Park Tudor as five minutes, 30 seconds have passed. They have not scored a single point all game. They give it up, and this is the first time he's touched the ball. Passes it. William just passes it up, gives it to Ramirez. Ramirez fakes a pass. That even got me to just subbed in Caleb Johnson. Johnson did just sub in for the Wolves as Micah Moore checked in for Spencer Hogue for Park Tudor Panthers. Ramirez is looking very strong on both sides right now. However, Chris Hart has taken most of the Wolves' shots. And he's up for two shots. His first free throw is good. And that will put the Wolves on the board with 2.25 left in the first quarter. One to five, Park Tudor is up. And that will be good as both shots go in. Kadafi Anika has the ball, gives it to Ronald Johnson. Ronald Johnson takes the ball up. He gives it to Kadafi Honaker. Kadafi has three guys guarding it, but kicks it off to Michael Moore, who shoots. No good for three. Good look by Kadafi Honaker after getting triple team. Brody pulls down the rebound. As Ramirez has the ball, gives it to Hart. Hart down low. Williams kicks it back out to Brody. Brody with the floater. No good as Ronald Johnson gets the rebound. Another flat out thrown up shot by the Wolves. McCole Greenwell pulls up with the jumper. No good. Open shot and very good shot by Cole Greenwell there. However, it did not go in. Quick handles by jo uh, Caleb Johnson. Passes it to Williams. Williams to Hart. Hart out to Johnson. Johnson to uh, Williams down low. Williams binding up Gaddafi and tries to put up with it. No good. That will still be uh, Wolves ball after being deflected out of bounds by Gaddafi Honecker. Our stream might be going in and out right now, so sorry if that is uh, currently an issue. We are trying to get that fixed for those who might be watching right now. Oh, great defense by Spencer Hogg on that inbound. But they end up getting the shot anyway, and that is star player Williams with the shot. 6-7. How is Park Tudor going to contest him this game? He does look to be very scared and has not taken many shots, but when he has, he looks to be very good. Micah Moore drives... Kicks it out to Spencer Hogue, who slows it down up top. Looks like they were going for a fast break, then slew it down. Malachi Archie has the ball, gives it to Kadafi Honaker. Kadafi pulls up from the free throw line. No good on the jumper. 4-5 as Johnson drives it in, but the foul is going to be on the floor. Is it going to be an and one? It is going to be on the floor. And really... A very low scoring game considering the fact that normally most of Providence Chris, Christo Ray's games are usually very high scoring. Yeah. In fact, their last game was 70 to 64. Whereas Part Shooter, though, is a very low scoring team. But Kadafi Honaker gets a fast break steal, goes and almost goes up for the dunk, but ends up getting the layup 4 to 7 with one minute left in the first quarter. Part Shooter is up by 3. Great play by Kadafi Honaker. Steal and coast to coast as. Kyle Hart jacks it up from deep three. No good. And Micah Moore has it. Drives the ball in. Kicks it out to Malachi Archie. Who kicks it out to Cole Greenwell. Cole Greenwell for wing three. And an oh. out. No good. But Micah Moore, smallest guy in the court, gets a rebound over three defenders. Gives it out to Spencer Hogue up top. 30 seconds left. Looks like they're going to be holding it for the last shot. Micah Moore got the re rebound over Anthony Williams, who is literally a foot taller than him. But Micah Moore shoots a three. Yeah, Micah Moore, good. amazing possession there. Micah Moore gets an offensive rebound and hits a corner three to put Park Tudor up six with 13 seconds left. Like I said before the game, Micah Moore has improved so much during this season. Eight seconds left. Kyle Hart gives it to Williams. Williams drives down with three seconds left. Gets stripped by Final. Malachi Archie. Micah Moore puts up a half-court shot. No good. Park Tudor up 10-4 after the first quarter. And you have to be impressed with Park Tudor's performance yeah. thus far. Park Tudor started off well, hit a slow spot, but totally regained their composure with two minutes left in the half, in the quarter. And one has to wonder, though, is Providence Crystal, Crystal Ray slow start due to the fact that they had to start all their seniors because of senior night. 
I don't know if that's the case there, Gage, because they eventually put in all their starters less than two minutes into the game. And then they do not like to pass the ball, and their team chemistry is horrendous. Well, this is Coach Biddings. He's been at the school for a while, doing a good job with the boys. Maybe you'd like to see more chemistry, though? Yeah, Kyle Hart likes to throw up a lot of shots, which they should give the ball to Chris Williams Hart. more down the middle. Chris Hart. And he does like to throw up a bunch of shots, which is kind of like Isaiah Moore uh, for Park Tudor when he was there. Except Isaiah Moore seemed to have hit a lot of his shots, and Park Tudor does miss him. Although Chris Hart is averaging 12 points a game, I don't know if he should continue shooting on his cold streak right now. Chris Hart's high scoring may be due to the fact of their lower competition and the fact that he takes a lot of shots, Salda. Well, we'll wait and see, as it looks like Spencer Hogue is going to pass in the ball. Started the second quarter, gets it into Cole Greenwald, who Cole didn't start, but he came in with about two minutes and hasn't been out since. And Michael Moore has the ball. Oh, but trips, trips with the ball on the floor. On the floor went Caleb Johnson, ends up, Spencer Hogue ends up tying up with him for the jump ball. It's gonna be Wolves ball. And a great hustle by Caleb Johnson. The sophomore showing great heart right there. As Ramirez brings up the ball. Passes it to Stamps. Stamps uh, to Tom, TJ Thomas, who subbed in for the first time. Gives it to Ramirez. Ramirez has the ball up top. Gives it to Stamps. Stamps to Williams. Williams has it up top. Gives it to Thomas. Thomas does a shot fake. Drives the ball in. Goes all the way. Gets fouled going for the layup. Two shots. Thomas had a shot. wide open Williams right in front of the basket. But he did go up strong and got fouled. Well, it was a good take by Thomas right there. Couldn't quite get the finish. And Park Tudor putting their starters in. Everybody but Ronald Johnson, who appears to be getting a quick breather after that first quarter. Indeed, Gage, indeed. Indeed he is. And that was a first free throw missed by TJ as he goes up for a second. And he hits that one, five to 10. Park Tudor still up five with 7.23 in the second quarter. Spencer Hogue dribbles the ball. Tight pressure by Stamps. Gives it to Michael Moore. Mike dead to Malachi. Malachi gives it to Kadavi Honaker up top, who then gives it to Michael Moore. Michael Moore drives in the ball, goes up with the floater, and it's good. Michael Moore's having another incredible game right now. Well, showing his hustle and shooting. The season. Michael Moore has improved so much. Yes, he has. Indeed, Gage. And they give it to Williams at the corner. Williams gives it back to Ramirez. Sets the screen. Does a pick and roll. Doesn't find him, though. And now it's going to be Caleb Johnson driving. Hits him with the shot fake. A oh, great move by Caleb move. Johnson. Proving to be very shifty. That may have been the first solid move besides Ramirez as earlier in the game. By Providence to Del Rey. Hope gives it to Greenwald. Greenwald to Gaddafi. Honaker up top. Honaker to Archie who passes it down low to Cole who passes it back up top to Archie who passes it to Michael Moore 4-3 no good wide open shot and it was a very good shot selection by Michael Moore there and Stamps is good, bringing it up on a fast break ends up slowing it down good defense by Cole Greenwald gives it to Williams Williams gives it out to Johnson Caleb Johnson that is for the Wolves Caleb drives throws up a floater but a short air ball good defense by Parchuda right there as Spencer Ho will bring up the ball. Another one person drive and throw up a shot by Providence Del Rey. That seems to be what they do. They seem to be a drive and shoot team, not a drive and kick team. As Kanafi Honaker does the same thing, except he hits his layup. 7 14, Park Tudor up seven. Williams cannot do anything on defense. He seems to be very scared of the ball. Well, oftentimes, somebody with that type of height plays not because. They are necessarily so good at basketball, but because they have height and potential, that might be the case with Williams. Indeed it is, Gage. Indeed it is. All right. Give it out to Ramirez. Ramirez has it up top. Type defense by Spencer Hogue. Gives it to TJ Thomas. Thomas gives it to Johnson. Who then gives it out to Stamps. Stamps drives. Pulls up. No good. Malachi Archie with the rebound. What is the Wolves' deal with passing? They do none of it. 
Malachi Archie gets a pass for Michael Moore for three, and it's good. Park Tudor goes up double digits for the first time this game early in the second quarter. Phenomenal play there by Moore and Archie. And that'll be a timeout called by Providence Cristo Ray. Their first taken, Park Tudor playing a phenomenal game thus far. Yes, they have. One important thing to point out going into this game is although the Wolves are 10 and 8 and the Panthers are only 6 and 14, the schedules are so much different to the point where the only team they've really played as the same has been Indianapolis Lutheran, who Park Tudor just blew up by 20 in their last game. You can go watch that broadcast if you haven't already. But Providence uh, managed to lose by like 15 point, 13 points to be exact. Park Tudor has a good history of basketball, so they still have tougher schedules left over. That is correct. They were actually going up to 3A the last two years before this one, and they just got moved back down after the whole incident hit Park Tudor. Yes. And with the uh, Yogi Farrell and Trayvon Blue Air, they could beat 4A teams at that time. They were nationally ranked. And uh, in the state, they were ranked top five, nationally ranked in the top 50. It was a great year for Park Tudor. Chilling now, looking to take over UCLA coaching eventually. But it's back in, Providence Del Rey's ball. Gives it to Stamps on the wing. Stamps gives it to Kyle Hart. Why? Chris Hart, that is, excuse me. Air balls it. But then uh, Stamps saves it, gets it into Caleb Johnson. No good. Qaddafi Honecker going up strong for the rebound. How does Hart average to over 10 points a game even? He that seems is to correct. not he be able to hit a shot. A wide open three. He must just be cold on this night. As Ronald Johnson did sub back in the game for Park Tudor. Subbed in for Cole Greenwald, who's been playing a great game. Johnson has the ball up top. Drives on Johnson. Johnson drives past Johnson, but misses his layup. And now... Fast break by Chris Hart. Chris Hart tries passing it. Ends up getting stolen by Qaddafi Honecker. As he gives it to Spencer Hogue, who takes up the ball. Gives it to Micah Moore. Micah Moore gives it wide open to Malachi Archie, who drives it in for the floater. No good. And Williams tried getting the rebound. Ends up tipping it out. Stamps tried to save it again, but didn't manage. Perk Tudor ball under the hoop. The 6-4 Qaddafi Honecker has been manhandling the 6-7 Williams. And I'm sorry if the quality hasn't been necessarily as good as it can be right now, folks. Uh, we are trying to fix every difficulty with our broadcast currently. Sorry if it's not going as smoothly. As Park Tudor turnovers the ball and drives to the hoop. No good. That was Caleb Johnson trying to drive to the hoop. They're fighting over the re rebound. And that's going to be out on number 30, TJ Thomas, as Cole Greenwald did a nice job putting it off. Thomas, Park Tudor's ball, 320 left in the second quarter. Caleb Johnson likes to drive and throw it off the backboard. He's done that multiple times so far this game. And a flop by Caleb Johnson right there. Spencer Hogue has the ball, nevertheless. Gives it out to Qaddafi Honecker. Honecker drives, ends up getting fouled on the shot. Anthony Williams has actually exited the game. And excuse me, that has not, he was not fouled on the shot. He was actually fouled on the dribble. Spencer Hogue has the ball. Gives it to Cole Greenwald. Looks like our audio is back on, not buffering anymore. Sorry about that. As Ronald Johnson has the ball, gives it to Cole Greenwald in the corner. Cole Greenwald gives it to Qaddafi Honecker. Qaddafi swings it to Micah Moore. Micah Moore swings it to Ronald Johnson. Johnson has it, swings it back to Micah in the corner. Micah drives, and it gets rejected by Brody. Brody with the massive rejection as Caleb Johnson takes it. But he ends up traveling, kills all the momentum. Caleb Johnson and Hart are extremely erratic players and do not have any control over their bodies right now. However, that was a huge momentum killer but the Wolves are still getting hyped, their fan section is, after that massive block by Brody. Props to the kid, great, great play. Spencer Hogue gives it to Micah Moore. Micah Moore drives it, kicks it to Cole Greenwell. Cole Greenwell, corner three. Phenomenal shot by Cole Greenwell right there. 
Partridge bringing all the momentum back on their side. The last two threes, Partridge has had Michael Moore has had an assist on. Michael Moore playing a great team player, really filling in his brother's shoes. Not in the way his brother is a leader to the team, but in other ways, passing, rebounding, defense. And that's Brody with the drive. Gets a step back floater, no good. Gets his own rebound over Cole Greenwald. Puts up the, misses his own layup again. Kanafi Honaker gets the rebound. It gets stripped, but Spencer Hoke saves it from going out of bounds. This place is loud. Well, Providence Crystal Dora has a huge fan section here. And gives it to Micah Moore up top. Micah gives it to Hogue. Hope calls for the screen. Kadafi Honaker doesn't get it. But he kicks it out to Kadafi Honaker, who kicks it to Malachi Archie up top. Archie has the ball. Kicks it to Spencer Hogue. Hogue drives. Kicks it wide open to Michael Moore for three. Oh, oh, no good. Looks like Michael Moore is a little more hesitant to drive after getting blocked. 121 left in the second quarter. Park Tudor up 720. Chris Hart has the ball on the wing. Guarded tightly by Spencer Hogue, who gives it down low to Brody, Brody drives, hits the floater, 9-20. Good and shot Hogue by Brody the there. However, Providence still, right, still has not been passing at all. Spencer Hogue has the ball ha past half court. Gives it to Micah Moore. Micah getting double, double team. teamed. Gives it to Cole Greenwald, Cole Greenwald to Malachi, Archie, Archie back to Greenwald, Greenwald to Honaker up top. Honaker to Hogue. Hogue has it. Gives it to Honaker. Honaker has the ball up top. Drives. Kicks it though to Cole Greenwald back up top. Looks like they're going to hold it for the last shot. Nope, it looks like they won't as it's almost stripped and almost stolen by Caleb Johnson. As Ronald subs back in the game for Micah Moore who played a great first half. And they're gonna be passing in the ball. Hogue has it. He kicks it to Johnson. Johnson kicks it to Greenwald. Greenwald back to Hogue. 14 seconds left. Hogue almost loses the ball. Maintains it. Is in the corner. 10 seconds left. Greenwald has it. Kicks it to Archie. Eight seconds. Seven, six. Gives it to Ronald Johnson. Ronald drives. He drives and kicks it wide open to Cole Greenwald. Cole Greenwald kicks it to Spencer Hogue. Wide open for three. And it's good. Park Center hits the buzzer beater. 23-9 going into halftime. Park Center up 14. Great first half. Park Center's lighting him up from the on the arc. As Providence Del Rey looks completely destroyed. And the thing about Park Tudor is, or excuse me, the thing about Spencer Hogue, he doesn't shoot threes often, but when he does, he is money. Oh, Gage, this has been a tremendous first half here. What do you think is, excuse me, what do you think are the Wolves' plan in order to come back in this second half? The Wolves should play on part tutor more, and they should pass around more similar to what part tutor does. And they should get the ball inside to Williams in less of uh, uh, an offense, less around Hart and number 15, Caleb Johnson. Because those guys cannot do anything at this moment. Do you think that ball movement is a major is a main key in the second half for these Wolves? Yes, it is, Gage. Yes, it is. And what do you think Park Tudor needs to do in order to maintain this lead? I think Park Tudor needs to keep playing great defense. And the turnovers that they caused in the JV game, they don't need to cause turnovers in this game because Providence is turning it over on their own by throwing up terrible shots. And Park Tudor's three-pointers have been wide open due to the driving kicking of their offense at this moment. So do you think the main thing Park Tudor has is chemistry? Yes, Park Tudor's chemistry is very good right now. What would you like to say about Coach Shelton and how he's coached this team? Coach Shelton has done a great job coaching this team. So he has brought them together, and they're looking like a team right now. And last question, I've been hitting you with rapid-fire questions, but do you think that without Isaiah Moore, this team tends to have more chemistry? They have more chemistry, however, they do not have one offensive force who they can rely on at the clutch moments in time like Isaiah. Well, it's giving opportunity for a young team to step up. Who do you think was the MVP of that first half? The MVP of the first half, I think, was Qaddafi Honaker and Michael Moore because Michael Moore is playing great defense, steals and had the amazing rebound, and Qaddafi Honaker is playing like a great big man right now. 
bodying up against the 6'7", Anthony Williams. And of course, Kadafi Honaker, in my opinion, looking better than he's looked all season. Maybe not, you haven't heard us broadcast it all the time because we have to stick with broadcasting the play-by-play, -play, who has the ball, what everybody's doing. But Kadafi Honaker has really been playing lockdown defense, great offense, great screens. Everything he's done this game has been spot on. And of course, Michael Moore, other than that one time he got rejected, has been having a great offensive game, great defensive game and just really proven that he can fill his brother's shoes in order to lead the team. And uh, my co-broadcaster, although going to the bathroom before the game, has to go peek right now, so I will be taking over. Um, of course, Meyer Rothbaum, known for a small bladder, one time went to the bathroom five times during the movie It. I saw it with him. He went to the bathroom five times. Some say it's because he was scared and he just wanted to miss parts of the movie. Others say it's because he just has a really small bladder. Anyway, to move on from Meyer's bladder. Other things going on at Park Tudor right now are girls doing great in sectionals. Other sports are starting up. And Park Tudor has someone in the Olympics, which is always something to celebrate. However, speaking of alumni, for Providence Crystal Ray, they have had George McGinnis. Yes, that's right. George McGinnis, former Indiana Pacer, one time went to Providence Crystal Ray. He was at one time a wolf. Oh, oh! Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can tell right now, I am just trying to buy a little time. I'm going to be quite honest with you, as I am with me, as Meyer Rothbaum is currently in the bathroom. Ping Hillway. Good for him, though. Not holding it in. That's very unhealthy, by the way. Uh, but you see, causes of frequent bladder often have to do with drinking lots of water. So it's good to know that he is hydrated because you will need to stay hydrated. And hopefully these boys are hydrating in the locker room right now. See what I did there? Pulled down Myers' bladder problems to problems actually going on in the game. Speaking of problems going on in the game in the second half, Partruder has proven to be a first-half team and not a second-half and their stamina, especially playing only a six-man rotation this game so far, has really proven to take a toll on what Park Tudor is uh, able to do with stamina late in games. Their conditioning has gotten better, but it still might be weaker than most other teams, especially because Providence Cristo Ray has played a total of nine people and have continuously played them. Meanwhile, Park Tudor has only played six people. Welcome back, Meyer Rothbaum, from your little pee break. How was it? It was an amazing pee break, Gage. One of the best of my life. Well, that is great to hear. Are the bathrooms nice? Um, the bathrooms don't have dividers, which is extremely annoying for me. Meyer, explain what a comedy TV show Gage, idea shut that up. you have. <laughs> nope. Okay. <Stop>. No, okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Meyer is a little of a comedian himself, but going back to the game situation, back to the game, do you think conditioning is going to come into play for Park Tudor's second half, considering the fact that they have only played a six-man rotation up to this point? Well, Park Tudor has not had to do too much running due to the fact that they have a slow play style and that they've had the ball most of the game. However, one thing I do think, Ronald Johnson usually scores a lot of points, has been re has not scored at all this game pretty much. However, Ronald Johnson has not been trying to jack up shots and force his shot. He hasn't been scoring a lot. He knows that it's a team effort, and he's been letting his team take mm -hmm. over. Great leadership and great, what's the word I'm looking for? Great um, poise. Poise by the freshman. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing to know that we have such a young player who has – such good morals and confidence that he knows that although he's having one bad game, he'll pick him, he'll pick it up, and he'll let his team win the game. He's a team player first, and that's what I like about the kid. Mm -hmm. Three minutes left in halftime. Park Tudor up 14. Park Tudor, of course, up 13 to Bishop Chatard, and only ended up winning that game by three. Game was tied up with a minute left. In fact, that game. Mm -hmm. And so far, another interesting fact, no 
Parkshooter player who played JV or just JV this game has also played this varsity game. They have only gone with a six-man rotation, which is interesting because they have been tending to play a lot more of their bench over the last couple of games. Yes. However, for the previous games I've seen, Coach Owen likes to play a lot of starters. He does. Early on in the season, he played a lot of starters. Recently, he's played a lot of starters. Very interesting to see what's going to happen However, as Partridge comes back on the court. Like play, a player such as Kadafi Honaker has to play pretty much the entire game because of a threat like Anthony Williams, whereas he's the only one who even can measure up at all to his height. Speaking of which, this is the last game before Tristan Buffkit, the kid who all the hype is around, comes and plays for Park Tudor. Already said to be going to be the star of Park Tudor now with Isaiah Moore out. It's going to be very interesting to see what this team is like with Tristan Buffkit. There's Eli Anderson. Uh, can, we get, can we get you on for an interview, Eli? Eli Anderson, how's your foot doing? Can I hear myself? What? My foot? Yeah, your foot. Can I hear myself? No, I can't hear no, myself. No, you can't hear yourself. Go, just just talk. Um, It's getting better. I'm almost at 100%. Looking to play varsity next week, maybe in sectionals. That's great. Um, How do you think Tristan Buffkitts playing varsity is going to affect this team? Well, it gives, uh, it gives the offense a lot more options to go in and out, and Tristan can play out, Cato can play out, it gives us two more big men. It gives us subs so we can have more energy for the fourth quarter, which we had a, a very big struggle on. And going into Monrovia and sectionals, how do you think you're gonna be able to contribute to this Park Tudor varsity team? Well, I talked to Coach yesterday, mm -hmm. and I'm just a scrap man, you know? I just get every 50-50 ball, make sure I box every time, know where I am, you know? The, big, the little things, doing filming right now while I'm hurt, and so, I'll, one more question. Playing JV, like I've played with you for years. Playing JV, you've really gotten to show uh, your Eli Anderson, your capability to take over a game, be a star. Playing varsity, have you finally been able to adjust to being the scrappy type defensive player, not necessarily the star of the team? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I, it's not, I don't need to score for us to win a game. That's the way it goes. All right, well, looking forward to seeing you play JV Varsity for Park Tutor for many years to come. Thank you, Eli Anderson. Thank you very much. Good job, guys. Go back on film now. They need you. And that's how Eli's contributing to the team right now, by his film. Great job by the kid. Eli Anderson is a very good defensive and scrappy player. However, he could have shot more when he was playing. And when he comes back, he should shoot more. Of course, that's something that all of his friends and even his parents get on him for. Mm -hmm. Park Tudor now comes back on the court along with Providence. Looks like it's going to be, for Providence, it's going to be Ramirez, Hart, Williams, Stamps, and Brody out on the court. And for Park Tudor, it's going to be Hogue, Moore, Johnson, Honaker, and Archie. As Hogue takes the ball out, passes it into Ronald Johnson, Park Tudor's ball Second half is underway. They give the ball up to Micah Moore. Micah to Kadafi Honaker. Back to Micah Moore. Back to Ronald Johnson. Gives it to Malachi Archie. 4 3. And it is good. Great ball, great ball movement by Partuder there. They may have done more passes on that possession than Providence has done the entire game. Partuder back up 17 points, their biggest lead of the game. Stamps has the ball up top, tightly guarded by Micah Moore. Gives it to Hart. Hart then goes, gives it to Stamps. Stamps drives it in, dribbles, goes up for the shot, no good. Kadafi Honaker gets the rebound, tips it in to Michael Moore, who looks like he got a ball in the face. A little shaken up, gets back on his feet though. Spencer Hoke has the ball, gives it to Kadafi Honaker, who gives it to Archie, who gives it to Johnson, wide open for three in the corner. No good though, as he has also gone cold this game. Yes, he has. But it was great ball movement by the Panthers there. And Stamps just drives, goes coast to coast, like most players have been doing for Providence. Christo Ray and ends up scoring the bucket 11 to 26 with 6.54 left in the third. Still a terrible shot selection by him though. Ronald Johnson has the ball. Gives it to Spencer Hogue. Hogue back to Archie. Archie has the ball up top. Gives it to Honaker. Honaker drives the ball in. 
Oh, goes out for the layup, gets stripped though by Brody, who then passes it to Archie for three. Archie with another bucket of 18. Cannot, Honaker loses the ball, but then makes a great pass to Archie, who executes the open three. Really impressive performance by Archie this game. Mm -hmm. However, Hart responds with a good old layup of his own, 13-29. Park Tudor still at 16. Seems like Hart's now one for a million. However, it seems like the two top scorers for Park Tudor and Providence are both having low-scoring games, but they, as Ronald Johnson goes up and gets fouled. But yes, Ronald Johnson and Chris Hart, two big players, both going up, both getting fouled. And it looks like Ramirez is going to be down. It might have been a shot to the nose or a shot to the eye. We can't really tell from our angle. He's covering his face, though, down on the ground, injured. As Cole Greenwald checks in for Micah Moore. Mm -hmm. what, how have you thought both teams have come out of the gate so far? Well, part tutor came out amazing, whereas Providence has had a couple. They've just been doing their same thing, but a couple of them went in. And Ramirez on the ground, holding his face, his head. He could have landed hard, could have had a concussion. We really didn't see what happened. It all moved too fast for me to see. Gage, well, do you know whose fault it is that Ramirez got hurt? Who's, Meyer? I don't think it's any of the players. I think it's society's fault that Ramirez got hurt there. Think it's society's fault he got hurt? Strictly yes, I do. society? Well, Ramirez being a Lat Latino American, I wouldn't necessarily think it would be society's fault. But great comment by Meyer Rothbaum with the spectacular throwback to our Black Lives Matter assembly uh, on Wednesday, which was very controversial drawing the lines at Park Tudor School. However, Ramirez is up, he's talking, he's all good. Trader seems to be out there helping him to his feet. He's not quite on his feet yet, still on his butt. And he's finally back on his feet. Looks like it might be a concussion, probably a concussion. Hopefully he's good to go as he has been playing a very good game for the Wolves. 6.03 left in the game, 29-13, Park Tudor is up. Could the Panthers hold the Wolves to under 20 points this game? Excuse me. Could the Panthers hold the Wolves to under 20 points? Oh, I think the way their defense have been playing, especially now with Ramirez out, that they can manage Hart not going off this half and the good drives by players such as Stamps and Johnson, Caleb Johnson that is, then I think that they can hold them within 20. Do I think it will happen realistically though? No. Do I think it could happen? Definitely. Well, the thing about Hart is he only shoots 25% from the beyond the arc, which is a terrible percentage. This game shooting 0%, 0 for 3, 0 for 2, excuse me. That's Ronald Johnson goes up for two shots. First one's up. Band is good. First shot is good, 13-30. Park Tudor up with 6.03 left in the third quarter. Dribbling it out. Second shot up. And it's good. Ronald Johnson hits both free throws to go up 18 points, tied for the most they've ever been up all game. As Hart brings out the ball, gives it to Stamps. Stamps, who then gives it up, excuse me, who gives it to Jaron Freeman, who subbed in for the first time. Freeman missed a three, however. Park Tudor got the rebound. Spencer Hogue brings up the ball, gives it to Archie. Archie gives it to Honaker. Honaker to Greenwald. Greenwald to Johnson. Back to Honaker. Honaker drives, shoots a floater, no good. Tries to get his own rebound. Great defense by Hart, though. Great rebound to pull it down. Honaker should have up. gone up strong for the layup there and not to settle for the floater. Well, a lot of young big men need to get better at going up strong. Honaker, one of them. On that, since Williams just throwing a turnover right to Spencer Hope's hand. But however, the ball just got stripped from Ronald Johnson. Gives it back to Williams. Williams gives it to Brody. Brody goes up with the layup. Misses a layup wide open. Gets his own rebound, though. It gets fouled on a second attempt. Wide open left-handed layup missed by Brody. Williams, and that's not something you see often in varsity games. Williams was guarded by two 5'10 guys. However, he still managed to throw the ball away with a terrible pass, and he cracked under the pressure. And speaking of Eli Anderson, we talked to his dad, who uh, Williams looked impressive during warm-ups, but he said if the guy was as good as he looked and as good as he seemed to look, 
everybody would have heard about him. And of course, I'm sure this is many of your guys' first times hearing about him as Brody misses the first free throw. Anyway, do you think Williams has potential? I think Williams has great potential because of his height and his athleticism. However, I think that he needs like a coach to work out with him specifically to get his like to get him stronger and a better shot. And he makes Brody makes the second free throw as the ball is given to Archie. Archie gives it to Cole Greenwald. Greenwald has it. Greenwald could have walked right there, Rustin to call it. Gives it to Honaker. Honaker has it, dribbles, gives it back to Greenwald. Greenwald guarded tightly by Freeman. Honaker has the ball, gives it to Johnson up top. RJ to Greenwald. Greenwald gives it back to RJ. Ronald for three, fakes it. Goes in, ends up shooting a floater, no good. Fakes the three. Ronald Johnson just can't seem to catch a break this game. He should have taken the three there. I just don't think he's confident in the shot as Freeman passes it to Stamps with the backdoor cut. Stamps is good. Freeman's coming this game with a little ball of fire as he gets the assist right there. Ronald Johnson has the ball. Guarded tightly, full court by Brody, but he beats him. Gives it to Archie. Archie drives. Could have walked right there, Russ didn't call it. But Honaker just gets stripped by Hart. Hart's going to take it all the way for the layup. And it's good. They cut it within 13 points just in the span of a couple minutes. 31 to 18 with 3.54 left in the third quarter. Part two are only up 13. Yes, it seems to only be a 13-point game at this moment. Well, As considering Kyle what Hart it's been in past it. games. Only 13, and that's gonna be a travel call on Spencer Hogue as Elijah Shelton subs in the game for the first time, going in for Hogue, the man who just traveled. 3.45 left. Looks like at this rate, Park Tudor is not gonna hold them under 20, but we'll see what happens. Stamps has the ball, bringing it up. Who gives it down to Brody down low, tightly guarded by Archie. Archie ends up fouling him on the shot. Brody doing a great job of getting fouled. But Brody cannot hit a layup. They shouldn't touch him and he'll still miss the layup. And of course, Meyer is referencing him missing his wide open left-handed layup a couple possessions ago as he goes up for two shots. This has been a very low fouling game as Park Tudor only has two fouls this quarter. Only had three all of the first half. And <laughs> Providence Christo Ray only has four, five fouls the whole entire game as well, is what my updates have shown me as Brody misses the first free throw, but hits the second. He is two for four on the game. He has a completely awkward form where he throws the ball and just lets his hands go immediately. 12 point game with them being able to cut it from 18 to 12 with 3.31 left in the third quarter. I think that they missed a foul on Nazaya Stamps there. However, still Park Tudor ball. Park Tudor, Ronald Johnson passes it into Michael Moore, who gives it back to Ronald Johnson. Brody's gonna be pressuring Johnson as he easily breaks him. Oh, and Brody just shoves him on the ground. Says that he was the one who got fouled. A little interesting right there as Park Tudor has the ball again. Ronald Johnson getting fouled by Brody. That will be his first of the game. I think Brody was referencing the fact that Ronald Johnson pushed away his arm earlier in the play. And Michael Moore has the ball. Dribbles it up. Gives it to Kadafi Honaker who shoots a jumper. And it's good. Great jumper by Kadafi Honaker right there. So that really is his range. Just a mid-range jumper. And Freeman has the ball. Gives it to Hart. Hart gives it back to Freeman. Back to Hart again. Hart drives the ball, goes up with the layup. Almost hits the end one, gets fouled though, up for two shots. This Park Tudor is up 19 to 33. Coach Sean seems to be getting a little frustrated with his cousin, Elijah, on that play. And 2.56 left in the third quarter as Chris Hart misses his first free throw. It looks like Hogue and Honaker no, Hogue and Greenwald are going to be subbing in for Archie and Johnson. Kadafi still in the game. Out there right now for Park Tudor are number 24, Elijah Shelton. Number 15, Kadafi Honaker. Number 4, Spencer Hogue. Number 1, Micah Moore. And number 10, Cole Greenwald. As Hart hits his second free throw to put it within a 13-point lead for Park Tudor. 
Kanafi Honecker has the ball, 2.55 in the third quarter. And Spencer Hogue is trying to take up the ball. Our Chris Hart on him tightly. Hart, or Hogue gives it to Shelton. Shelton drives, goes all the way. Misses a layup though, good defense by Caleb Johnson who takes the ball up the other way. Slows it down though as Spencer Hogue plays good defense. Gives it to Stamp Smith, gives it directly to Brody. Brody goes up and gets fouled again. They keep fouling Brody on that layup. And Brody of course, two for four on free throws today. Missing both of his first free throws but hitting his second attempts. However, Brody seems to drive a lot, but he does get fouled, but he's not that good of a shot, so it should not be too bad for the Panthers. First free throw is up. No good. Two for five. He does have a trend, though. He's missed all three of his first free throw attempts and made, so far, two for two on his second free throw attempts. Let's see what he does right here. 20-33, Park Tudor up. Well, Gage, watch his form here. It's a very awkward form. That is very correct. His form is just kind of popping him up like he is in the third grade trying to shoot a ball on a 10-foot rim. I know me and you have had that relatable problem. And as he does hit a second free throw, three for six on the night, Micah Moore just get fouled by number 23, Stamps. I don't know if Moore's really fouled there. As soon as I've said that there weren't a lot of fouls this game, I think they might have heard me and done the complete opposite as now the fouls are starting to pick up for both teams. Four on Park Tudor, three on Providence, Chris Ray. Cole Greenwell has the ball, gives it to Shelton. Shelton gives it to Honecker. Ball ends up not being tipped. It was just a bad pass by Shelton. It's gonna be Wolves ball. And what have you thought of the third quarter performances by both teams so I think far? that Providence still Ray has started to pick it up a little more, hitting like a few more shots. Parts of the rest started to get very lazy on defense and fouling much more and just swatting at the ball. 21-33, 12-point game. Caleb Johnson has it. Is trying to get it at the post. To appears Brody, who is their number one post player, even with 6-7 Williams out there. Ball is given to Stamps. Stamps back to Johnson. Johnson drives, goes up, and hits the layup. And doesn't get the end one call he was looking for, though. 23-33, 10-point game with 141 left in the third. Hoke has the ball, dribbles it up, and just gets bodied by Chris Hart. That's going to be a foul call. The, the Wolves seem to be very, very athletic, 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 but are, are not, are not like, like, or don't, don't have don't a have super high basketball, basketball like you. Like you. Like, they like to drive for a row of shots, however, Johnson just hit a very good shot there. 23-33, already breaking your 20-point marker. You were wondering if they'd hit all game. They hit it pretty midway through the third quarter. Four fouls for each team now. 135 left of the third. The different styles and cheerleaders are really showing right now. And fan section. One seems to be a little more into it, and the other seems to be a little more, one seems to be a little more, I'll put it this way, one seems to be a little more preppy, the other one seems to be a little more city. In the JV game, there's a there's hilarious, hilarious mother, mother sitting, sitting on the other on the side, side of the field, field who just left. She was sitting on the other side of the court, it must have just left. Good shout out right there, Meyer. As Ronald Johnson has the ball on the wing. He drives and kicks it to Cole Greenwald in the corner. Cole Greenwald brings it back up top. Wide open on the opposite corner to Michael Moore. And great, and great. It's good. Great pass great by Cole Greenwald. Great, great, great shot by Michael Moore, Moore right, there. right there. Stamps brings the ball up. Drives, kicks it to Johnson. Johnson drives, tries for the step back, doesn't take the shot though. Stamps has it, dribbles in. Gives it to, great pass to Williams. As Williams goes up, gets fouled on the shot. Great pass by Nazia Stamps right there. And he's gonna be up for two shots. Williams, that is, who really has been having a silent game despite his height. And, he and you might think, well, does he have silent games on the reg? That is incorrect because he does average nine points a game. Up. And it's good. One minute left in the third. Exactly. 24-36. Parked it up with William. Second shot. 
Williams also averaging two blocks a game. Happens to have zero. Now, does it seem like Brody's playing more as a, of a center than Williams this game? Yes, it does. It does. And Williams, Williams has a good, has a good shot. shot. He's tall. He's tall. Can dunk. Can dunk. Um, um, but, he but, still but he still does not, does not do much, do on, much offense. on offense. Private training. I think this sophomore will have a very good shot at making it someday. Williams, Williams hit the second free throw to make it a 11-point game. game. Park Turner taking a timeout after not being able to get in the inbound. Good call by Spencer Hogue as Mike Shelton has him in the huddle. Both fan sections getting loud, one a little louder than the other. If you could watch this fan section get turned, you would be into it as well. I did not, I did see, not one see one person in the Park Theater fan section getting hyped right now, including, including, including us. However, however, the Providence, the Providence the Ray, the Ray fan, section fan section is going, is going crazy. crazy. Looks like they are now hitting the Nene, uh, it appears one of them was hitting the Nene. I don't think, I don't think that's, that's the Nene, that's the nene, nene right, right there, Gage. Gage. Well, you know what? I'm a white boy from a private school. I don't know exactly how to identify all these dance moves as Ronald Johnson takes the ball up. Gage, please, Gage, please don't make any more of those comments, comments in my vicinity. I'll try my best as Cole Greenwald gets the ball in the corner. Gives it to Spencer Hogue. Johnson with a nice spin move on Hart, ends up getting the ball stripped, but still manages to get it out to Michael Moore. Micah back to Cole Greenwald. Greenwald has it up top, gives it to Moore. Moore drives the ball and kicks it up top to Spencer Hogue. 30 seconds left in the quarter. Cole Greenwald has the ball. Gives it to Hogue. Hogue seems to be holding it up top with 20 seconds left. Kicks it to Johnson. Johnson kicks it to Greenwald. Providence doing everything they can to seal the ball, but not being able to thus far. Ronald Johnson tries to drive it in, seven seconds, drives it in, gets fouled on the floor. That is going to be on number 10, so that will be on Chris Hart, his second of the game. The part to door fan, fan section is so on hype right, right now, right now. Sammy, Sammy Parrish, Parrish is not standing up at this moment. moment. Well, that is a shocker. Sweet but Sammy, Sammy, Sammy has become Park biggest, biggest, biggest fan. fan. But Ronald Johnson shoots a three, misses it. Brody ends up fouling. Kadafi Honaker trying to go in for the rebound, though. Looks like Park Tudor will get with 1.1 seconds, one more chance on a shot. As Ronald Johnson misses yet another three. 25-36. Sammy Parrish is taking a seat, as is every Cheering for Park Tudor other than the cheerleaders. As Spencer Hope will pick up the ball with one second left. And they get a five second violation. Great defense by the Wolves. However, some are saying that that wasn't five seconds right there. That that wasn't really five seconds right there. That they, it was a premature call. As there's going to be five seconds. As Providence, Chris Do Ray is going to get a chance at a last second buzzer beater. I don't think it'll affect it that much. Being the, being the, the fact that there's 1.1 seconds. And the shot is up. No good. Providence Ray just right there. Just right there. Half one, one second left. Pass in, and then they. Well, aren't you very finally happy that Providence Do Ray or Chris Do Ray is actually deciding to pass the ball? Decided to pass it on one, one time. time. That was not smart. Park shooter up 11, 36-25 in the fourth quarter. And the girls for both teams are out on the court. And right now, Park Shooter Panther are cheering. There's where are you at? Can I get a hand clap? I am giving them a hand clap, as are many of the fans. And currently, the Providence Crystal Ray, I'm not going to comment on what they are fully doing, because then Meyer Rothbaum will get pretty upset at me. But they are cheering. They did something that was semi good, but of course, the crowd getting ultra hype for it. Good on them. Park Tudor players have really stepped, really stepped up, up this game. Ronald Johnson, Ronald Johnson who's probably, who's probably a turn, turn turned our star player, has it done, has much, done much ever. ever. Cole Greenwall, Cole Greenwall Michael, Michael Moore, Moore, and, and Malachi, Malachi Archie, Archie have, have really stepped, really stepped up, this up this game. Indeed they have. With eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Uh, excuse me, the beginning of the fourth. And once again, only... Seven players have played this game for Park Tudor. 
even with the pretty commanding lead throughout the whole entire game. Fortuner does have pretty good, pretty good depth, depth on the roster, roster this year. But they are not playing much of that depth this game as only two subs coming in are Cole Greenwald and Elijah Shelton, who is actually Coach Shelton's cousin, not nephew. I made that mistake a couple broadcasts. Fortuner went into a 2-3 zone. Kadafi Honecker ended up getting the steal there, giving it to Ronald Johnson, who's taking the ball up. Gives it to uh, Spencer Hogue. Spencer Hogue gets the ball tipped out of his hands by Caleb Johnson. Will remain part to the ball. Coach Sean, Coach Sean seems, seems pretty, pretty heated right, right now. Spencer Hogue looking to pass the ball in. That will be a moving screen. Uh, oh, not a moving screen. That will be called on Caleb Johnson, which will be their seventh foul of the game. One and one shot. And these refs have seemed to be, as Ian Krill says, very touchy, touchy call type refs. Over, over, they have not, they have been, not bad been bad refs, in my opinion. They, they, have, they have called, called, most, called of most of the calls. They have called a lot of calls. They really haven't made any bad ones. They've been a little touchy. I know Ian Krill is the type of guy who wants to let him play, as he'll tell you himself. Da -da. Da -da. Da -da. That's Ian Krill. If you get offended out there, promise Ian Cole is a regular kid. We're not making fun of anybody with disabilities. As Park Tudor takes the ball off in a 1-3-1 zone. Excuse me, no, that's the Wolves. The Wolves give it into Brody down low for the layup. Under, under a 10-point game, point game at this moment. First time it's been a single possession game since early in the second quarter. As Spencer Hogue brings the ball down the court. He's winning there with nine, nine such possessions. possessions. Excuse me. He said it was, he said a, single it was a single possession game, game there. there. Single point. Anyway, Spencer Hogue has the ball on the wing. He gives it out to Michael Moore. Michael Moore drives, shoots a layup, gets a tip, and it will remain part two to the ball. What I meant to say, a single digit game, not single possession. Thank you for calling me out right Michael there. Michael Moore looks, looks like a Providence star, star, star right player, player there. there. Just running, Just to, running the to the basket. He's going to run it up with his eyes closed. Kadafi Honecker gives it out to Ronald Johnson. Ronald Johnson to Michael Moore. Michael Moore drives baseline, gets a trip, loses control of the ball, gets on the ground though with a great recovery pass to Spencer Hogue. That was a great move by Micah. Ronald Johnson has the ball on the right wing. Tightly guarded by Caleb Johnson. Johnson on Johnson. Gives it to uh, Spencer Hogue. Hogue gives it to Honecker. Honecker behind the three-point arc. Gives it uh, back to Hogue. As he will now pass it to Archie. Archie just moving it. But gives it to Honecker. Honecker drives driving, gets nowhere. Back out top to Archie. 6.22 left in the fourth quarter. Archie gives it to Hogue. Hogue gives it to Honecker. Honecker takes it with power and gets just fouled by Brody. That was a hard foul. Pass. That is now quick fouls by Providence Cristo Ray as they started off on the game very slow, but now already have eight fouls this half. As Kadafi Honecker will go up for two shots since it was on the shot. Archie Ray has very, very few to two this game. Well, Providence, well, Providence still has yet to hit a three. And Kadafi Honecker misses his first, first free throw short. Some could put some of the blame on the Wolf cheerleaders who are being very turned over there. As Cole Greenwald subs in the game for Michael Moore. 6-11 left in the fourth quarter. Park Tudor losing their lead a little as Kadafi Honecker hits the second free throw, readjusts, and hits it, putting it back into a double digit game. It is not, it's not, not a double possession, possession game, game at this moment. And and uh, excuse me, that will be Caleb Johnson having the ball up top. Park Tudor playing very good defense right now. Very good defense. And uh, they forced Christo Ray to take a timeout. And well, I am impressed by, even though they haven't been playing as great as they could potentially play, I am very impressed by the way Providence has been playing this quarter. Providence is a more physically dominant, dominant team than Park Tudor. Now, as you are correct, they are—they all do seem to have somewhat of muscle on them, or they are, are pretty built as the timeout's over. Johnson passes it to 
Stamps, excuse me. Stamps has it. Passes it to Johnson. Johnson back to Stamps. Stamps to Hart. Hart down low to Williams, who dunks it on Malachi Arjun. Big dunk by the big man. That could, that could be a momentum changer there. there. Let's see if we stop the momentum as it is an eight point game with 528 left in the game. Five seconds, five seconds violation, violation, violation on Ryan Johnson. Johnson. And once again, a quick count for five seconds. As it, that is a, if, if Providence could capitalize here, this could be huge for them. With only 530 left, left in the fourth, Providence, Providence could, could get finally, finally hold, on, hold on to the momentum. momentum. Give it to Stamps who pulls up for three. Oh my god, oh my god, god it hit it. Hit. the three. Five point game with five minutes left. Oh my gosh. How have they been able to come back in the five point game? Everybody's going crazy in this the arena. Back is back is going going oh, but Hart just fouls Johnson. It's an off ball foul. It's going to be a one and one shot from Ronald Johnson. That could be a costly foul. A huge quiet momentum, or a huge stunt of momentum. You can't hear anything, anything in this arena. arena. The Wolves fans, fans, fans cheering. cheering. We hear ourselves talk as 5.09 left in the game. Five point game. It is coming down to the wire in this one, boys. Ronald Johnson goes up for his first one and one free throw. It's getting loud. Nobody wants him to hit it, but he hits his first free throw, puts it back at a six point game. Ronald, Ronald, Ronald Johnson can hit both of these. The momentum, the momentum could, could go back, go back to even. However, this is still anyone's game right now. As Ronald Johnson goes up for his second free throw attempt, shoots it up, and it's no good. Oh, good. He misses it. Oh boy, six point game. Caleb Johnson, this is a crucial, a crucial drive right here. At this point, this point in the game, the Warriors just are jacking up three throws, which is what a lot of teams would do. Would do. Stamps has the ball. Gives it to Johnson. Johnson. And one thing you have to say about the Wolves, they're moving the ball so much better this half than they were in the first. Yes, they yes, have. they have. Oh, but a pull-up shot by Johnson. No good. No, but Brody gets the rebound. And he puts it back. Four-point game, Meyer. Four what what do you think? Shot, shot. Shot. Can you believe this? I cannot right, right, right now, Gage. Archie Dorf is so so the entire game up in the fourth quarter. Ben Hark has the ball. He drives it. Gives it out to Ronald Johnson. Ronald Johnson has the ball. Wolves are well, so, so, so much in right, right, right now. Parker wants up 18, now only up by four points with four minutes left in the half. Oh, but Malachi trips off of Johnson's foot and they call that a foul. That will be two shots for Archie, who might be a little shaken up after that one. Archie Tudor has been way too conservative this half. And, and they're doing, they're doing what they've done in previous, previous games, which is just holding, holding, holding the ball and hope, and hope the other team doesn't, doesn't score. score. And now the arena getting louder than they have been all game, but doesn't prevent Malachi from hitting his first. And on to that point, Meyer. Uh, Partridor normally plays in the second half to uh, keep the win, or to not lose. They don't play to win in the second half. They play not to lose. That's what cost Jacksonville in the playoffs. That's what's cost many teams throughout the years. And it is what costs part two in previous games. Has 34-40, they are up six points after Johnson hits both shots. However, a pull-up shot. What a great shot by Stamps. I did not expect him to make that Andrew shot. Andrew was fouled on the play that the rest did, did not call. 36-40, part up four with 3.52 left in the quarter. In the game, Ronald Johnson has the ball. He drives it, kicks it out to Cole Greenwald. Greenwald drives. Oh, and this ends up, oh, almost a steal by Brody, but ends up being a kick foul violation, kick ball violation, excuse me. Partridor will take it out. Michael Moore currently sitting out of the game. One has to wonder, is, is he gonna go back in this game? As Spencer Moe has the ball. Could not be on a contest, not done anything, anything, anything this half. This half. And Ronald Johnson drives, trips on the drive though, no foul is calling. Gives it to Archie, who gives it to Greenwald, who gives it to Hogue, who Hogue drives it in, gives it to Johnson, who then swings it again to Archie. They have gone in like a full circle and a half. Two, two, two open, open shots, shots passed up. 319 left. Spencer Hogue has it. Gives it to Qaddafi Honaker. Honaker gives it to Greenwald. Greenwald tightly contested by Freeman, who just subbed in. Freeman tightly on it, but Honaker has the ball. Back to Greenwald. Looks like they're just holding the ball. Three minutes left. Three minutes left in the ha in the game. Hogue has the ball. Tightly guarded by Hart. 
Hope drives it in, throws it for the layup, gets fouled by Hart. Great drive by Tyson. He went up, he went up strong, he got fouled, so now he gets two shots on the line. The varsity and JV team are part two from the Brooklyn completely different styles of play. That is very correct. It's two completely different coaches. Of course, Coach Shelton likes to play more conservative. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, JV's coach seems to play a little more liberal as the noise in here might have been too much for Hogue as Hogue misses his first free throw. 251 left in the game. I'd like, I'd like I, to commend Edmund, Edmund Wagner, Wagner for style, his style of playing the JV game where he likes to press and press very, very, very offensive. But Hogue does, that is correct about JV. Hogue does miss his second free throw, however, putting it back at a five point game with 249. Right now, Providence has been somewhat on a high streak. I'd like to argue that the momentum is still on their side. As Stamps has it in the corner. Gives it to Freeman. Freeman tarted, tight, guarded tightly by Ronald Johnson. Gives it to uh, Johnson, who has the ball up top. Guarded by Cole Greenwald. Johnson pulls up with the floater, and it's good! Great point Great. game! It is a one possession game for the first time since early on in the first quarter. One possession game, 38-41. This, this game is turning out amazing. amazing. This is an all-time classic of a game. The Wolves, the Wolves have not missed right, right now. Hogue has it. Gives it to Johnson. Johnson gives it back to Hogue. Hogue to Archie. Archie to Greenwald. Greenwald's open in the corner. Passes it up though. And he ends up timeout called by Mike Shelton. By Coach Shelton. Is with that one set the minute, 50 seconds seconds left in this game, three-point game. This is uh, turning out to be a classic for the Park Tudor Panthers. This may be this the, second the second time out of the, out of the whole game. game. It is going absolutely crazy, absolutely intense, and I cannot believe what I am witnessing. 15-point comeback from when they were down 18. Can they come back all the way? Let's see if Park Tudor can do what they did against Bishop Chatard and close out the game, or if they're going to just blow another one. All right, and Park Tudor coming back in. It's going to be their ball. Providence, Cristo. Going to be playing tight, tight defense. All right, and it's going to be passing in the ball to Kadafi. Kadafi to Malachi Archie. Archie has the ball. Gives it to Honecker. Honecker has it. Gives it to Moore. Moore to Archie. Archie has it up top. Great defense, but Parker are just holding the ball with a minute 35 left. Looks like they aren't going for a shot as Ronald Johnson has it. Ronald Johnson, however, goes in for a drive. Almost tripped. But Hoke has it. Hoke gives it down to Kadafi Honecker, who gives it back. Oh no, the ball's dead! Oh, Brody gets the steal! Brody, Brody gets the steal! Brody gets the steal! Brody gets the on the shot. Oh Brody, Brody's hurt though. Brody, Brody, is, Brody down. is down. Oh, this is coming down to a close game. That was a questionable call if it was all ball. Honecker lost the ball way, way, too, way early. too early. And here, I'm going to. All right, and the crowd is getting silent. Brody up. A lot of pressure on the young kid. 119 left. First shot. Up. And it's good. It's good. He hits it. Second shot. What a pressure. Up. No good. And Kadafi Honecker does rack down the rebound. Spencer Hogue has it. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I am uh, low on battery. We might cut out mid-broadcast, and I am very sorry if we do. But right now, two-point game. Spencer Hogue has the ball, getting tightly pressured. And Malachi Archie has it. Gives it to Spencer Hogue. Hogue has the ball. Gives it to Archie. Oh my gosh, they're